Okay, we're continuing complex numbers, and this is where we left off in our last video. Now, we're going to make a little modification here. Right? We are going to say we look at the power of the polar forms of the complex number. Instead of multiplying two complex numbers, look at the polar form. Then from that will arise a certain theorem. E H E O R E M. Now, in order to spell the name, I need to look it up on my phone. Let me make sure about the name of it, of the person. Let's pause here and look. Aha, I found it. It is, the name is. Abraham D. Well, sometimes it's written it uppercase D. M. O. I. V. R. E. The Morves theorem. Right? So it said here that he was a French mathematician known for the formula that we're going to look at called the, the Morse theorem. It kind of looks like the Moy Ver or Vries theorem, but it's French. So I guess they call it the Morse theorem. Um let's erase these parts of the board now and see what we can come up with. All right, because we don't want to just look at the theorem, write down the theorem and say, hey, there's a the theorem. What we want to do is develop the theorem so we would know whether we would just take it by faith. Well, we don't want to take anything just by faith. We want to see where it comes from. I want to be skeptical and suspicious, right? And see where these things come from. Suppose we have Z1 is R. All right, let's not bother with the 1 and 2s and so on. It's just one angle. It's just one complex number. So what we have is Z1. Well, Z equal R cos theta plus i r sine theta. What is z squared? Well, let's see. It's r cos theta plus i r sine theta. We're squaring it, so we're multiplying it again. We multiply it by itself. r cos theta plus i r sine theta. So, z squared equals Let's multiply these. So we have r times r, which is r squared cos theta cos squared theta. That's all it's really written. If you remember your trig identities and so on, when you say cosine and you square it, you write it as cos squared. Cosine theta and you square it, you write it as cos squared theta like that. All right? So, that's r squared cos squared theta plus, this is going to be i times r squared cos theta sine theta. Let's put the sine in front. Sine theta cos theta. See that? Then i times r squared. So it's plus i r squared. Um, sine theta cos theta and then we have uh, i times i we multiply 
i times i, which is i squared, r times r, r squared, sine squared theta. Okay? You see that? So now, z squared equal, we have r squared cos squared theta over here minus but this itself the i squared is negative one so you have minus negative one which is positive so it's going to be plus r squared sine theta so what i'm talking about this is now going to be a minus let's put this minus here again then this comes to what i i squared is negative one so you have a minus negative one which is a positive one so it's a plus all of this so it's r squared sine squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta see that plus let's you see the i and the r squared you can put those outside of a bracket because they are common factors so you have i r squared then inside the bracket we have sine theta cos theta plus uh, let's get rid of this part of the rough work here sine theta cos theta so what do we have now z squared equal now here put so r squared outside the bracket we have r squared open bracket cos squared theta plus sine squared theta plus i r squared sine theta cos theta plus sine theta cos theta would be 2 cos um 2 sine theta cos theta right now here we know that from our thing there our um, trig identities cos square theta plus sine square theta would be one did i make an error here hold on hold on let me see something here i had said where did i get this minus from Let's look at it again. R squared cos squared theta is this plus R squared I R squared sine cos is this plus I R squared sine theta cos theta minus why did why did I put a minus here? It should be minus. It's a plus. There's no minus here. My, my. And then what we have is i times i, i squared, r squared, sine squared theta. It's plus. All right. My mistake. It's plus here. Oh, so guess what now? This now, i, I squared is negative 1. So... This would turn out to be minus r squared sine squared. Okay, so there would be no one here at all. All right, so this would be r cos squared theta minus r squared sine squared theta. Right, that's what would happen. And then this would be r squared outside the bracket cos squared theta minus sine squared theta right and then this would be i r and then cos theta sine theta cos theta sine theta cos theta would be 2 cos theta all right so that's what we have there. 
Now, what we have here is z squared equal r squared times what? Now, if you look up your double angle identity, you will see that cos squared x minus sine squared x is cos 2x. So, therefore, cos squared theta minus sine squared theta is cos 2 theta, alright? Plus i r squared. Now, there's another double angle trigonometric identity that says 2 sine x cos 2 um, 2 sine x cos x is sine 2x. So in this case, 2 sine theta cos theta is sine 2 theta. Alright. So in this case now, when we square our um, complex number, we Square the magnitude, right? And multiply the angle by 2. So the magnitude of a complex number squared. And the angle is multiplied by 2. Same thing happens here. Magnitude is squared, angle is multiplied by 2. Now, if you should find z cube you will also see that it is r cube cos 3 theta plus i r cube sine 3 theta and so on theta 3 3 theta and so on and so forth now generally z to the power of n to the power of n is going to be r to the n cos n theta plus i r to the n sine n theta and that is the Morv theorem all right so here we go with the Morv's theorem now i have copied the Morv's theorem from an ebook called calculus no pre-calculus mathematics for calculus oh no i didn't copy it the right way let's go back to that ebook this is the ebook let me copy the image oh i don't need to copy it it's right here so when repeated use of multiplication formula give the following formula for raising a complex number to a power of n any part where for n for any positive integer n the Morse theorem well d e m o i v r e s did i spell it right d e m o i v r e s ah i spelled it right but the d they didn't put the what they call it, tilde at the d at the e d oh is there a space there yeah D Morse theorem should put a space between D and Morse, but anyway, you said you call R cos theta i plus i sine theta. They have the brackets here. Then for any integer n, z to the n is R to the n cos n theta plus i sine n theta. All right, so that is the Morse theorem. So say this. R to the n, they use lowercase r, r to the n, cos n theta plus i sine n theta, right? So they put the bracket there and factor out the r to the n. So you have one r to the n. But basically, you raise the modulus of the complex number to the power of n. Then multiply the angle by n. So, there you have it. The Morse theorem.